mock. I'm not a fool. And people who know me personally uh, know that I am not a fool. But I won't get into the details of those. I just want people to realize that I'm not a fool. Don't mock. I'm not a fool. Don't mock. I'm not a fool. Hey there and welcome, it's Tony here from the Dhamma Leaders Handbook and it's episode 63, recorded on New Year's Eve 2019. I hope 2019 has been an amazing year for you. If not, can I tell you, um, you've got everything within you now to become a better leader, a better manager, a better, create a better business Um, And one of the best places to start is to become a better leader. And that's obviously take some time over at the Dumb Leaders Handbook and have a look at some of the articles, some of our hints and our tips and some of the stuff that we've talked about in in our podcast series. We're now getting a lot more questions coming through from our listeners and we're answering them through the podcast. So I hope that uh, if this is your first time listening, please subscribe. Um, the more people that subscribe and give us reviews, the more likely we can be found by other people that are in need of us. Today's episode is all about dumb leader disasters and what dumb leaders get up to or allow to happen at Christmas parties. It's an annual tradition that we do. We uh, research, we go through some of the news that have been highlighted from right around the world and we look for some of this commentary around dumb things that have happened at Christmas parties. And the dumbest thing that we could find happened right here in Australia. And the headline was, Police Investigating WA Labor's Staffers' Christmas Party Incident. Don't you love that? That'd be a great T-shirt, wouldn't it? Alleged Christmas party incident. Anyone out there in T-shirt design, hit us up. That sounds like something that we would love to have. Now, and and once again, I just go through the news piece, so it's as reported. I'll add some commentary along the way, but um, pretty much this is about how it's been publicly available out there in the news world online. So police have spoken to the woman, at the centre of an inappropriate conduct incident on Friday night that led to the resignation of WA Treasurer's Ben Wyatt's chief spin doctor. Senior media advisor Stephen uh, Kales was suspended indefinitely and subsequently tendered his re- resignation on Monday after he was involved in inappropriate physical conduct towards a colleague at a Christmas party for Mr. Wyatt's staff on Friday night. Police are now looking into the incident and have spoken to the woman involved. On Tuesday, WA Premier Mark McGowan revealed more details about the incident. The advice I have is, as it has been reported, that there was some inappropriate conduct involving some unwelcome physical contact and that obviously meant that Mr. Kales had to make a decision to resign. It was on a Friday evening at a function. I understand it was someone known to Mr. Kales. Mr. Kales was also forced to apologise to a woman in writing after inappropriate conduct at a 2017 Labour Christmas function for media. So a little bit of a track record there for our Mr. Kales. Before taking up an appointment in Mr. Wyatt's office, Kales was Chief of Staff for Seven News Perth for four years. Mr. Wyatt said the latest incident was tragic tragic for everybody, including Mr. Kales. These things at every turn are tragic. These things are very difficult, but ultimately the behaviour meant that this, his position was untenable. And Mr. Kales obviously worked that out pretty quickly and resigned. So it's always interesting, you know, when, when I look back on some of these dumb leaders' antics at Christmas parties, the majority of, the vast majority of them, especially those that are involved in this concept of inappropriate conduct, are predominantly male. So whether that's our old 
reptilian brain that sort of sits within us or the some narcissistic tendencies that we you know that we may have or the concept of power and influence I'm not quite sure it could be a, a mixture or it could just be the fact that they just drink far too much alcohol and suddenly take um on board the wrong sort of commentary around you know just people talking and conversing so yeah, it's very interesting. So Mr. Kless obviously um, didn't work it out back in 2017, but has now pretty much worked it out that anything inappropriate is inappropriate, regardless whether it's at a Christmas party or um, or on a, a day-to-day basis. Unfortunately, I'm going to report on some unpopular, um, some really um, devastating things that happened at Christmas parties in Philadelphia, for example. A mother was stabbed to death in front of her children when a Christmas party turned into tragedy. So it's really horrible to see these sorts of resort uh, uh, reports. Um, there was another one at the Bronx that turned violent. Four people were stabbed at a a party that turned violent at the in in the Bronx on Christmas morning, revelers were drinking at a house party in Concourse Village when a fight broke out around 5:50, leaving four ages 21, 24, 29, and 35 with stab wounds. So it's always tragedy when, when tragic when you see things like that. In what should be a joyful, festive um, time, suddenly we all just get too drunk and emotional and things just get out of hand. So it's always it's always a good thing if um, a, a leader, whether it's a, a leadership in a business sense or a leadership in a family sense, that we've got some people that manage to um, keep ourselves in control of our own emotions because that's really important. This is an interesting one. This one happened at Cambridge Cambridge Shire Police. They were having. There was a group of off-duty officers. They arrested a wanted man during their police Christmas party. It was the police's Southern Impact team. They were having a meal in Cambridge on Tuesday night when a priority suspect was spotted nearby. In a Facebook post, the force said the officers downed their knives and forks and surrounded the unsuspecting male who was wanted on recall to prison. Marked officers were called to take him to a police station. The post on the policing Huntingdon Shire with the hashtag uninvited guest included a picture of the officers surrounding the suspect. The team were aware of the numerous arrest attempts made for this male already this week, so it seemed too good an opportunity to turn down, it said. Uh, more importantly, no meals got cold in the execution of this mission. That's always important, isn't it? Just make sure that those coppers and their their meals are, are remaining hot. So, I'm not quite sure what the advice would be there. I'm not, the, you know, they are off duty. They are obviously in policemen's uh, civilian clothes. The unsuspecting uh, guy who got arrested. Probably wasn't even aware that there were coppers there. So I'm not quite sure how to deal with that one, but hopefully a little bit better luck maybe next time. I, I don't know. I'm not that I want to wish a criminal good luck. So this is an interesting one. This is from Cork City, once again in the UK. As many of 20 staff have already been suspended in Cork City this Christmas party season. 20 staff, according to a leading employment law firm. John Boylan of BDM Boylan Solicitors says he's aware of 20 cases of suspensions for Christmas party behaviour and three of those have ended already in dismissals. A lot of employers are discovering a new new trend, which is nudity at parties. Yeah, why not? Let's just get nude. Um, I've worked with some pretty amazing teams in my time in corporate history and I, I'm pretty certain that not once have I encountered nudity at a Christmas party. However, it's a trend, um, apparently. So people using the free bar, not used to taking shots, and for and a lot of Irish people hear free bar and think there's no tomorrow, and they literally get out of their mind hammered. So speaking to Patricia Messenger on C103 Corks Today show, Mr Boylan said... There is a terrible loss of staff, a loss of morale, and in some cases damage to business reputation as a result of Christmas parties. The Labor Court 
the ordinary court have decided that the workplace is an extension. Uh, sorry, the Christmas party is an extension of the workplace, so that means your behaviour is supposed to be the same as if it was in the office. Now, if it was, not many people would go to a Christmas party, I'm pretty certain. But anyway, when the, what we are coming across is a huge rise in abusive managers, okay? <laughs> I'm going to put in, in commas, in inverted brackets, dumb managers, which causes strained relationships, an upsurge in physical assaults, a huge increase in drug use, and a jump in sexual behaviour. Right, so that's what Christmas parties do. We see a huge rise in abuse of managers, causing strained relationships, an upsurge in physical assaults, a huge increase in drug use, and why not? And a jump in sexual behaviour. All of these great things happen at the office Christmas party. Um, it's a dumb leader disaster. That's been made worse by mobile phone usage, by videos, photographs, and then there's no going back. Someone sent me in a video this year where you had a man in his 60s on the dance floor nude. You know, so there's that trend again, and if I'd gotten it, unfortunately that means it's gone viral. If someone gets to that state, they'll probably not remember the next day, and we are finding a lot of places are losing these employees as they are not even turning up the next day or the next Monday out of embarrassment. And and seriously, I mean, this is a dumb leader concept because there needs to be guidelines and parameters placed on free bars and, and whatnot. And there needs to be some sort of behavioural monitoring and expectations before a Christmas party and then during a Christmas party. Not someone wanting to be a killjoy, of course. You want people to enjoy themselves. But where it gets into an unhealthy state, where a 60-year-old dude is getting nude on the dance floor, I reckon that's a a, a prime misjudge, misjustice from the manager and the leaders of that particular organisation. So... Um, the expert in, and the, and the article goes on. The expert in employment law says there's a major problem with relations breaking down, or on the opposite end, turning romantic after a few drinks. Now, Mr. Boyle and added feelings on the love side and the problems with management side are always tend to come out after drink. So they, the employers, should not provide overnight accommodation. It's a recipe for disaster. And when you think about that, if you're having a Christmas party, for example, and you're providing a place for these people to stay, that's almost like an open invitation for them to get hammered, right? Um, if there are going to be drink-induced relationships starting and there are married people or people in relationships already with partners, if they are drunk and their judgment goes out the window then there are, and there are rooms booked upstairs, it's not a good idea. We found numerous examples of the following Monday. The two find it very hard to work together after that. The law firm asks employers to check if a Christmas party is really what people want and could they do something else for employees. Mr Boyland added... If you really ask the question if people want a Christmas party, you might be surprised that in a lot of cases they won't. I've personally witnessed a bit of a trend amongst my clients for Christmas breakfasts or Christmas lunches. So getting away from the, from the concept of just a free-for-all bar and actually just enjoying each other's company. And I know that some places out there it's very hard to enjoy the, the company of people that you work with, but ultimately um, that's what I've seen. So... Um, in over 50% of the cases, and this is from this law employment firm, they, it actually negatively Im affects morale. So 50% of cases, it negatively affects morale. All right. Now, Mamma Mia this year have done a great job, and they got everyone to send in um, their, some of their Christmas stories. And, and I thought that, yeah, this is pretty cool. So I'll make sure I've got the link in the descriptions. It's mamamia.com.au forward slash work dash Christmas dash parties dash stories, right? So number one, um, So this is some of the worst stories that people have shared. So this is, I texted my hotel room number to somebody I work with at the end of the night. No reply, blue ticked. It means, so that means that they've seen it, 
but they're not replying. So that's uh, that's pretty awkward. I hooked up with a guy in the middle of the dance floor. This number two at our work Christmas party. Literally everyone I knew at work saw us. It was mortifying. I hit at work on the Monday, but by 11 a.m. the manager next to me was like, all right, your hiding is over. Everyone was like, ooh. They even rang the bell they chime when someone makes a big sale. That's... <laughs> It's probably a little bit inappropriate. But anyway, at my first Christmas party, number three, I thought I'd be sneaky and bring a flash flask of vodka in my purse. I was sitting next to my boss at the Christmas lunch and continued to tell her the company will never leave the startup phase as it's too pretentious and only represents the views of white women in the city. She forgave me the next day after I apologized a lot, but it was my drunk thoughts that made me realize I should probably quit as the company didn't align with my values. So that's a win. Met my new boss at a Christmas out of work Christmas party. This is number four. He'd flown in from the UK where he'd been previously based. I was already a few wines in when he arrived and then I went on to slur all the office gossip to him or to about all the people in the room. Classic. Realising I was potentially ruining my career at that moment, I went out the front of the bar and threw up on the pavement. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Number five, a colleague and I were politely asked by security to leave the marina. The bar that we worked at was in a marina for trying to have sex on a boat that wasn't ours. If this is, if you've seen things like this, or if one of these is something that resembles something that you might have done back in the day at Christmas parties, um, yeah, my God. I know a girl, this number six, um, I know a girl who tried to choke our head of digital at the last place I worked. That's always a... A popular thing to do, I guess, at Christmas parties, or is it? Number seven, I had a colleague who got so drunk at a working party pre-drinks, one hour in, she vomited all over herself and her new team. She'd only been working there a week, who, um, and her new team carried her outside. She rolled herself up in a bunch of garbage bags and passed out. My God, how's that? Um, how would you ever like come back from that as a manager seriously um that's just horrendous um she'd only been there a week my god number eight i broke up a full punching fight between a coordinator and a senior guy at my christmas party the coordinator got fired he was trying to defend a girl he thought the senior guy was hitting on but he wasn't hitting on her they were just good friends yeah right once again, that blurring of judgment, blurring of emotions, and all of a sudden you're standing up for something that um, doesn't make a great deal of sense. So, we had our Christmas, this number nine, we had our Christmas party at a local sailing club. After taking advantage of the open bar, we decided to kick on at a nightclub. It wasn't until we got to the nightclub that we noticed that one of our workmates was missing. We asked around and no one from our work had seen him for the past 40 minutes. His partner was starting to stress and we tried calling him, but his phone was off. Because Alex's partner wasn't from our area, he had no idea where to stay that night and didn't know where to go. So our general manager ended up having to pay for a hotel room for Alex's partner for the night. It wasn't until the next morning around 10am that we found out what happened to Alex. It turned out he'd gone a bit too hard on the open bar and when he went to the bathroom decided a lie down would be a good idea. Can I just say, like, if you're going to the toilet, to the bathroom, to the restroom and you're thinking a lie down is probably a really good idea... I would probably be hoping that you were in such a position to actually say, no, it's not. I need to go home, right? <laughs> Sleeping on a bathroom floor is not a good thing to do. He passed out on a bench in the bathroom, and when the staff were cleaning up for the night, they locked the bathroom doors. So he was stuck and had to spend the night sleeping in the men's bathroom of the sailing club until a staff member came the next morning and opened the doors. If you think having a lie down is a great idea when you're pissed, it's not. Right. I worked in a department store, number 10, was secretly seeing a guy from the electronics department. All right. Secretly seeing this guy in an electronics department. We used to hang out quite a bit, but no one else at work knew. Or so you think. 
He came late to our Christmas party and by the time he'd arrived I was already a few too many wines deep. Long story short, we ended up pashing on the dance floor and it became very, very obvious what was going on. Thankfully, someone from the men's clothing department got into a huge fight with the boss that night so it took the spotlight away. That's always a good thing when you're busted having an affair. Always hope that someone's going to pick a fight or plan that. All right, my friend, Miss Number 11, my friend disappeared from the Christmas party for a while. She told me later that she'd hooked up with one of the business owners who has two children and a wife. Not a long-term career move, but hey, some, we know it happened. So I was new, Number 12, I was new and bought my boss a six-pack of craft beers as a gift and gave them to him the day of the Christmas party. Turns out he was gluten intolerant. <laughs> But since he isn't allergic, just intolerant, he drank one anyway. Later all, we all did an amazing race-style event around our city. We had to climb a significant tower, and he got to the top and was so sick from the beer and running that he threw up on the way back down. Yeah, and who's to fault there? Number 13, my friend got with a guy that was dressed as a chicken. <laughs> and by the time she left the party to go home with him, she was she was the one wearing the chicken suit. She came in the next day with, in the same clothes, not the chicken suit, just her previous outfit. So whatever happened that night, whatever happens in the chicken suit stays in the chicken suit. I don't know. I managed to excuse myself from the party in time. This is number 14, but vomited in the footwell of the taxi on the way home. Notice how these have got just um, a lot of connotations about vomiting on Christmas parties, but vomited on the footwell on the taxi on the way home. I thought I was silently vomiting, but my driver most definitely knew. I promptly fell asleep so he couldn't chuck me out and had to literally shake me awake at my destination. The next day, I had an extremely busy work day and had to pretend that I was fine. I kept running to the bathroom in between meetings. And the last one from Mamma Mia. One of my friends shimmied so hard on the dance floor, her spaghetti straps broke and she flashed everyone, including the head of training and our regional manager. I'm not quite sure why the head of training is such an incredibly um, specific person within that organisation. But hey... Her spaghetti straps broke. All right, this one, uh, the last ones that I'll be going through now are just two stories that were shared from hcamagazine.com um, coming from Australia. And this is about um, Christmas party horror stories. And there was two that we selected. And once again, I'll have the link in the description. Um, horrible Boss, this one was termed. And it's from a person called The Horse Meat Sandwich. So... Uh, Always good to know the credibility behind the person. It was hosted at a really nice restaurant. There was an open bar. We all arrived, had a drink, started chatting and joking around. Then the CEO arrived and promptly called us all to attention. We assumed he would be just to congratulate us all on a great year and wishing us happy holidays. But instead, he announced that we would not be receiving bonuses that year and there would be layoffs in the near future. All right, good man, boss. Well done. Um, horrible, boss. I've got to agree, that's the most horrible thing that could ever happen at a time of joy and celebration, being told something like that. So what a dickhead, dumb leader. Uh, this is one, the last one, um, my employee decided that on that uh, particular Christmas and for the first time staff could bring along their wives, husbands and significant others. One of my closest colleagues, slightly overfreshed, nudged the woman he was standing next to, nodded at a male and a female colleague, both out on the dance floor and said, he's been <coughs> uh, shagging her all year. The woman he was talking to was the guy's wife. And with that, let's just think about dumb leader disasters. Don't be the don't be the dumb leader. Don't be the dumb leader that gets their name or their antics uh, in the in the media. Just don't um, stay in control 
and um, look after yourself. With that, I hope 2019 has been an amazing year. I hope you've had had some time to refresh and recover from the year. It's always challenging getting through the year. It's also a good opportunity to spend some time with some really close um, people that you should love. We look forward to 2020 as we always do. 2020 is certainly going to be a pivotal year for myself. Um, I'm doing, I'm running two marathons. I'll be doing the Tokyo Marathon on the 1st of March and I'll be doing the Chicago in October. Plus, I'll be writing two books and they'll be self-published this year. So I really look forward to what 2020 will bring. Until next time, have yourselves a, a wonderful new year. Um, and I look forward to seeing you and talking with you again in the new year. Don't forget, visit dumbleaders.com, share us your stories and any questions that you may have, and we look forward to answering them through this podcast. See you next year. Don't mock. I'm not a fool. And people who know me personally uh, know that I am not a fool. But I won't get into the details of those. I just want people to realize that I'm not a fool. Don't mock. I'm not a fool. Don't mock. I'm not a fool.